three is to one day find the next Diego. Hello and welcome to the next Diego, the amazing adventure where we are trying to create the next Diego Armando Maradona, recreate his career, create a player that looks exactly like him and then take him to Boca and eventually to Barca but we are very early in this adventure and today we will focus on player development that is why I have this little excel spreadsheet down towards the bottom of the screen these are the five players who at the moment are the ones who are most like Diego Armando Maradona based on their Diego rating if you're not familiar with what the Diego rating is you can watch the first episode or I'll explain it to you quickly here it's a combination of the attributes dribbling, first touch and technique when it comes to the technical attributes, bravery, determination and flair together with vision for the mental ones and then acceleration, agility and balance for the physical attributes. The thought about this is that they are the ones who mostly represent a Diego Armando Maradona of FM21. So, Fernando Alvarez, Gabriel Roja, Matias Godoy, Mateo Diaz Chavez and Franco Benitez are the five guys who have the highest Diego rating and are also Argentinian and at the same time aged 18 or younger. We are training them fairly similarly. Uh, we are all training them with the Trequartista uh, training uh, regime and a couple of them are also working on individual focuses. The reason that all of them aren't is that Gabriel Roja and Matteo Diaz Chavez they have complained about training so I have removed that from them. Then we're also going to try to teach them traits that make them more Maradona-esque. For example tries tricks or runs with the ball. Typical Maradona tricks and there are a couple of more as well that we will try to teach them uh, along the way. If we look at the five future Maradonas we will start with Fernando Alvarez. This is what he looks like now. He has made a couple of uh, appearances for the first team. He has been decent when he has played, but the most important thing for him, because he is under 18, is to train and to train a lot. We will look into training in a little, little bit. But first of all, I want us to look at him and what he is doing. He has actually not improved any single attribute point so far but he has decreased one in determination that's why I'm now mentoring him we have one mentoring group and it looks like this Gabriel Hausche and Miguel Angel Torren are both team leaders part of the core social group and have good personalities and good determination then we have filled the group with five other players who we want to either change the personality of or increase their determination. So Fernando Alvarez is in this group. Another member of this group is Gabriel Roja, the Argentinian Brazilian, who hasn't improved anything either. We are working him in the same fashion except that we don't have focus ball control for him. First touch and technique are his strengths we are trying to teach him a little more dribbling see if we can get that done and then maybe move on to working on his agility and balance Matias Godoy is the only out and out striker of all of them uh, but he has been the one who has trained the best he has actually improved a couple of attribute points already strong when it comes to finishing good dribbling good technique nice first touch he lacks a bit of bravery which is an issue for all of these guys if you look at their their bravery Matteo Diaz Chavez has the lowest five and Gabriel Roja has the highest of eight this is going to be an issue because bravery is tough to train especially in young players it tends to sort of naturally increase a bit when the player gets older but that is not certain flair is another one of those attributes that is really hard to train which is the reason why I'm trying to find players with as high flair as possible. I learned this last season when I tried to recreate Pele or Neymar and flair was an important component as well and it was the toughest of all of the attributes to actually improve. Out of all of the attributes you can improve though I should say. Aggression for example you cannot change at all. Matteo Diaz Chavez is the fourth and last I'm going to show you uh, and he hasn't improved either 
but his strengths are in his dribbling and his first touch, together with a good determination and a personality of fan determined that should mean that he will improve. I have promoted all of these guys to the first squad because, in my experience, it doesn't really matter in what, which squad you are when you are under 18, because playing time is very, very secondary to actual training quality and, and training time. So in order to be able to get them mentored with first team players, I put them in the first team. One issue with putting them in the first team is that it becomes harder to work on specific player traits because the uh, the threshold to go over to get uh, an assistant manager or a coach to accept starting that training is much lower in the under 20s. So that might become an issue as well. We will see, but this is the way I'm trying to approach this now. I'm not sure if either of these guys will be the uh, the next Paradona, but I thought I'd show you Fernando Alvarez goal in his first game for the senior team. We played him in the central midfielder role. The ball bounced around a bit, but then we found him and what a finish straight up into the top bin. An absolutely brilliant finish from the young lad. And if we look at the schedule so far, it's been a bit of both, a bit of good and a bit of bad. Somehow we managed to get knocked out of the Copa Sudamericana quarter final against Vélez, even though we were we were classes better than they were. But we must have hit a bit of a slump of bad form then because we lost to Racing Club and Aldo Civi as well. After that, we have sort of found our legs again, drew at home against Vélez, and then we beat Boca away and Arsenal Sarandí at home 3-1, which puts us in a decent position for this game where we will play River Plate, maybe the best club in Argentina at the moment. Before we go into that game, I'm going to show you how I approach training as well. So the training schedule I've cre created involves around a Saturday game, but it could be tweaked. I have, uh, I have schedules for Wednesday games and Thursday games, etc. But I'm going to show you how we approach a game on a Saturday. We have a bit of a periodization that you can see here during the week. We work a bit harder on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then we have the lightest load on Fridays and Sundays before and after a Saturday game. We do train at a decent level on Mondays and Wednesdays as well and we put in training sessions all through the day, three sessions per day that is an absolute must if we're going to teach the players as much as possible. If we look through the entire week we start Monday with a physical team session and move on to a possession one where we work on both technical familiarity, passing style and tempo, but also work on dribbling, first touch, technique, vision that are important for our way of playing. We move on to ball retention where we work on first touch for the attacking players and defensive skills for the defensive players. On Tuesdays, it's a bit tougher because then we work on a physical regime. We work on quickness that hits acceleration, agility and pace. And then we do ball distribution and transition work that works on our key attributes as well. Then it's a bit of the same on Wednesday, a physical session followed by an attacking session where we get to work on dribbling, first touch, technique, flair which is very important to us, and a bit of vision as well. And then chance creation, where we get to use that technique and that flair and that vision to try to create chances for each other. We go up again in intensity for Thursday when there's another quickness training session. And then we work on playing from the back, which hits dribbling, first touch, passing, flair, vision, loads of the stuff we want to work on. And then a ball distribution, a second ball distribution session for the week where we hit dribbling and vision and teamwork and a bit of decision making. Then we start preparing for this week's game. We work on our defensive shape, a session focused on the defensive unit and the ropes they will play in the upcoming match. And then we also work on attacking movement where we focus on the attacking units and the roles they will use. Then we have an analysis session for the actual game, 
to get them focused on the upcoming opponent, increase position role duty, uh, and tactical familiarity all over. Then we play the actual game on Saturday, and then it's all about preparing for next week. And this is one of the things I am using if we are not traveling a double recovery. Why not rest, you might say? Well, recoveries are good because they greatly induce greatly reduce injury risk uh, and they reduce fatigue so I, I really like them it's more of an active approach to uh, to recovery than a rest session we have another one towards the end of that day and then we do a match review where we try to analyze the game what did we do good what did we do bad then we close that game week and look forward for the next match i hope that this will be a good cutoff between us actually performing in games and us actually improving our players if you have any questions or any input regarding the training and play development do let me know in the comment section now it's time to go into today's game maybe one of the toughest games of the season away against league leaders river plate and we are not backing away from our wonky 4114 strike list formation that has proven to be very good in certain games and a bit lackluster uh, and struggling to create really really good chances in other games or not create chances more to convert them into actual goals hopefully this is a cohesion thing and a familiarity thing the more familiar we get with this tactic the better we would do this is a bit of an issue though that Vera and Mater are struggling to really get acquainted with each other hopefully by playing them more they will actually start to find a good combination play uh, together so we come from two wins and I want us to pick up where we left off, see if we can keep building on this. A point here would be very good for us. How share is off early, but doesn't amount to anything. A draw here and maybe a goal score scored or two would make me very pleased. A sort of drab or lackluster performance where we don't score and get overrun that would make me a bit sad and that is the main issue with this tactic so far that it is a bit inconsistent sometimes we look like world champions and in other games it looks like we we haven't got to grip with this yet but here comes Gomez he's through oh he misses that one the keeper had already thrown himself in one direction so maybe a cheeky ship would have been perfect there but no he shoots just outside of the bar post I mean River is trying to find holes in our defense, and they do. Bigo, nice save from Chavez. So, no really good clear cut chances so far, even though we've had at least a half chance each. Here comes Hausche. No one really threatening in behind so far. I don't want us to lose the ball here. We don't. Here comes Cabrera talking about threatening in behind. Brilliant save from Armani. Pleasant name for their keeper. And a short corner routine, and they don't care about defending. What now? Anything here? Uh, loads of men in between him and the ball. I don't think we should try to get these high floating crosses in because we are a team consisting of Smurfs. So low crosses, please. Sandoval, very Argentinian defending there, stops him in his tracks. 15 minutes in, and I'm not too displeased actually. I think we've been, uh, we've been neck and neck with them. Which is good considering we are playing river. This cannot mount to anything, can it? No stupid stuff, Chavez. Sandoval with it. Don't love that one. I would want him to, to keep the ball at his feet, which he does now. Cabrera. They win it. Who's whose highlight is this gonna be? Actually, I have a feeling it's gonna be a river highlight. It is Alvarez de la Cruz. Ego, but we win it again. Could we counter on their counter? Oh shit, no, we cannot. That ends the highlight. Halfway through the first half, and it's nobody's game so far. Bit of a downtime here, bit of a lull, no real chances happening. We approach half time, eight minutes left until half time. Three, two, one. A bit of a rest. Nothing happened for the second half of the 
first half, loads of halves there. So if we look at the stats, four shots, one on target from River Plate, five shots, one on target from us. Our chances have been slightly better if we're going to trust the XG. I am, of course, going to tell the players I'm not happy. Most of them like that, except for Javier Cabrera. But let's ignore him and his demotivation. So the second half is off. Hopefully we can create at least one or two really good chances. See if we can convert. I would love us to have a higher conversion rate than we have at the moment. We need, in some games, we need too many chances to actually create a goal, which is an issue when the opponents do like this. Rafael Santos Bore makes it 1 0. Good counter attack from them, but I think we should have been able to stop this one. I feel like we are our own worst enemy there. Bit of pinballing, and it lands perfectly at the feet of Borre, and it's 1 0 for River. Bit of a shame, a bit of a disappointment. Hopefully, we can bounce back. Free kick comes in, Gomez, and they win it. Will it be another lethal counter? Just runs past his man, Borre. We get it away. That was very close. 2 0, I think, could have been the final nail in our coffin. And we need to step up a sub or two, maybe. Who's on the bench? Anyone we want to bring in? Gaston Paiva. 155 centimeters of magic comes in instead of Jonathan Gomez. And what else? Nothing else at the moment, I think. But we will put all our hope in the hands of Gaston Paiva, 155 centimeters. Some days he is magic, some days he is nowhere to be found. Hopefully, this is a magical day. Gomez, how share? Here we go. Can we create anything? Four against three. This is the sort of chance we need to convert. Gonzalez Metili. And we are not supposed to do like that. We must take advantage of these situations when we come four versus three, three versus two, two versus one. Not execute them like that. That was very poor. So a long way to go, even though I cannot be too disappointed. Remember that we were predicted to finish ninth this season. And River Plate, they are maybe the best team in all of Argentina. We are playing them away. And it's not like they are dominating us. Not at all. Even though we really, really struggle to create these good chances. Here they come again. I hate when you just throw the ball away in these throw-ins on FM21. Torren stops him in his tracks. Chavez, Cabrera. Now what? Can we create a bit of a counter-attack here? Gomez. Oh, shit. Oh, he tried to reach Gonzalez Mati in behind the back four. Very close, but didn't happen. Maybe another chance. The highlight isn't over yet. We give the ball away. Absolutely awful passing. Chavez saves us. He has been such a good keeper. When we beat Boca, Boca Juniors away, then he was the man of the match. He had like 20 saves or something, so absolutely brilliant. But in this game, he has let one shot past him, and that is one shot too many when we don't turn up offensively. Final five minutes. Let's pause it here. Let's scrap the striker. Let's throw a striker forward. Mater can go down into the DM position. Vera can come off. And in comes Herrera. Let's advance forward for the final few minutes to see what we can create. If we could create anything. Bit of pressure up front. Uh, Threat in the deep as well. We win it here. This is the sort of situation where we need to go attacking. So we have a man up front now, which means that they need to fall down a little lower. But we are still struggling to create anything. Pache, Gomez. Now what? Yes, come on. Best chance so far. Oh crap. Crap. Don't think we can have better chances than that. 
Maybe we can. Almost. So one really good chance, one half chance since we made that switch to bring in an actual striker. We might get forced to do that. But if the opponents do like that, then nothing can stop them. What a screamer, what a finish. From 20 yards out, he ends this game. De la Cruz to Suculini. And pow. That is how you kill a game. Doesn't matter how many strikers we have on pitch now, we will not we will not get get back in this one. No, this was not our best performance of the season and maybe that was too much to ask as well. Three nil in the dying minutes of the game and i feel like this is a bit undeserved they were not that much better than us even though we we, we fell apart like a house of cards towards the end of the game not 4-0 now don't humiliate us end the game instead thank you ref for showing that mercy so a 3-0 loss away against river not the result we were hoping for but we are still in ninth place and ninth is where we were predicted to finish since we have done well in the previous two seasons and the league structure is structured in such a way that you need to have a very low point average over three seasons to get relegated i'm not scared of that i am slightly scared of losing the job though which would kind of end this save before it even started If we look at the schedule going forward, I think I'm going to try to play a bit forward for the next game. See if we have had any development in our young Diegos. Uh, next time we will also look at scouting to see if we can bring in potential Diegos from other clubs. And the flair and bravery combination is one of the toughest tasks we have set ourselves to complete. because. Naturally, players with high bravery usually don't have high flair and vice versa, but we are looking for the combination. We are not looking for a messy. We are not looking for a quiet boy. We are looking for someone who is a bit more of a sinner than a saint, because we are looking for the next Diego.